This is a review of two electric bike pumps, the Psych Plus AS2 and the newly released AS2 Pro Max. I will test these pumps on different types of tires and I will let you know where I think each pump works best. The smaller AS2 was released about a year ago and got some attention here on YouTube for being so small and portable that it could replace a couple of CO2 cartridges or a mini pump for that matter. There is also an AS2 Pro version, which sits right in the middle between these two pumps. And after using these two pumps for a while, I think that pump is the most interesting version for a few reasons. Let's talk about that after this test. The main difference between the smaller AS2 pump and this Pro Max pump is the display that shows the tire pressure. The Pro versions also have larger batteries, a higher airflow, and the ability to pump tires to a higher pressure as well. The smaller AS2 pump has been criticized by some to not being able to pump higher pressure tires. I will test this shortly. Let's start with my trusty old dirt jumper. It's got 26 inch wheels and a pair of 2.2 inch wide tires. Not big tires by any stretch, but dirt jumpers need around three bars, which is more than you would run on regular mountain bike tires. The valve here is also different than what you find on most other bikes, except for kids' bikes. These are Schrader valves, and all pumps come with parts to fit both Schrader and the more common Presta valves. But there is some fiddling to change between the two different versions, and I don't think you can use these pumps on Dunlop valves. I had to use a pair of pliers on this smaller pump to loosen the nozzle cap, and by doing that I found something interesting. I was certain of that the cover and the nozzle cap of the pump were made from plastic since that's what it felt like to the touch. But I managed to scratch both parts and saw that everything is made out of metal. I was about to complain about using plastic parts especially on the nozzle cap which has threads in it. So in the end scratching the pump was a good thing. Now I don't have to complain so much. Using the pump is easy but it really is quite loud. I timed the pump from absolutely zero to 1.8 bars, which is about what you have on a regular mountain bike. The AS2 has got a smaller battery and the capacity should be around two uses, depending on tire and pressure. Here I got almost four full tires, which was a surprise. Let's say three full uses for these tires with some spare. The larger Pro Max was delivered with a hose, which you can use or not. It's not necessary to have it in my opinion, but if there's little room, it can be handy of course. The hose can be bought separately for the smaller AS2 pump. A target pressure can be set for the Pro and Pro Max, and the pump will automatically stop pumping when the target pressure is reached. But the biggest benefit is of course that there is a display in place, which shows the tire pressure in real time. This is very useful for mountain bikers who wants to tune the pressure when biking out in the woods. I got bored pumping this tire with the Pro Max pump and I didn't bother to find out how many uses the batteries got used for. But the battery is twice the capacity, so let's say 4 to 6 uses in this case. But there are other types of tires which I need to test the pumps on. So I paid my friends at Specialized Concept Store in Gothenburg a visit. They've got all types of tires that I need. Let's pick something expensive, like this brand new, super cool Tarmac SL8 Expert. Carbon all over of course, and with thin tires that need a pressure between 6 to 7.5 bars I think. Somewhere around that. But apparently a few crazy riders wants to have up to 11 bars sometimes, which is something that not many pumps can cope with. Battery powered or manual mini pumps. You need a proper compressor pump for that, or a very good floor pump. The small AS2 pump is on the limit here with its claimed 6.9 bar max pressure. I think it holds up pretty well though and it doesn't struggle as much as I thought it would. I read in forums that a few complain about the top end, while others are perfectly happy. But luckily there are the pro versions as well, which can deliver higher pressure and do so quicker too. CO2 pumps are of course much quicker than even the pro max pump. In any bike race, I don't see an electric pump as an alternative. But when training, I feel this is a bit more convenient to use. And with the silicone sleeve, the Psych Plus pumps are nice to grab. And it can be used several times. Mini pumps is the third option that many, if not most riders use, including myself. 
There are good mini pumps available, but it's definitely a workout to use them. On the plus side, they can be used as much as you like without fearing for running out of battery or CO2 cartridges. For convenience, the battery version definitely wins. They're super easy to use and lets you focus on your ride over pumping ferociously with the mini pump. And I think that the Pro Max pump can even replace larger pumps than mini pumps. Like when you're out with your family to a trail center and you quickly want to top up everyone's bikes before riding. Next bike is the Specialized Enduro, a bike that I love riding and it's one of my absolute favorite enduro bikes. Super nice rear end on this bike, but we're not here for the tires. This is a 29er with 2.3 inch wide tires. In reality, it's actually closer to 2.4. Not that it matters much in this context, I just wanted to mention it. In this test, I also want to check how reliable the meter on the Pro Max version really is. I borrow a dedicated pressure meter from Specialized to compare with, and the two meters seem to match pretty well. This isn't an exact science, but the accuracy of the Pro Max is good enough for me. I got to run three full tires with a smaller pump, but let's say it can do two big mountain bike tires and they'll be on the safe side. If you're on an e-bike, you might be lucky and have a charge port available. Charging the pumps is quick and it only took me around 15 minutes to charge the small pump and 30 minutes for the larger pump from almost empty. Having the ability to charge the pumps in some way from an e-bike or maybe with the power bank can be useful if you're in a bad spot with a slow leaking tire that cannot be fixed out on the trail. The final test is a size test. On many specialized bikes, there's a hatch with loads of room inside, but that hatch is somewhat small. The smaller pump fits easily in this bike. And even the large Pro Max pump fits well, so that's another plus for these pumps. I asked Cyplus about spare parts or the ability to replace the battery. But there are no spare parts or any way to replace the battery. Maybe the environmentalist would choose a mini pump instead to avoid creating more e-waste. The pump is not IP rated either, which makes sense in a way since there's an air intake for the compressor. The silicone sleeve dampens any bumps too, but again, no IP rating. If I, as a mountain biker, was to choose between these three pumps, I would go for the middle version, as it's only slightly heavier than the small one, and because I can measure the tire pressure with it. I'm okay with the smaller one though, which I can take with me on every ride from now on. The Pro Max can stay in the car or join me on my travels, since it's so much smaller than the foot pump. 